what a crash landing. Welcome back to the Panic Table Season 1, Unaccompanied Miners. Let's introduce ourselves, and I'm just gonna go wildly out of order and start with you. Hi, I'm Azuma. I'm playing India Baker, 17-year-old scientist. She, her, hers, that bitch, of course. Hello, my name is Anwar. I am playing Eddie Elmstead, a 16-year-old teamster uh, who doesn't have an actual job here yet, so we'll stay tuned. Hi, I'm Chris Kinkel. I am playing Barry Barracuda. Benjamin, class Marine. Job used to be a pirate, now I'm not. Former space pirate? Former space pirate. Shot in the head on episode one? Shot in the head, bullet. Keep it close. And, and it's uh, all good. It's all good. <laughs> and yeah, I just. <laughs> I'm Kelly, I'm playing Gracie, underscore eight, underscore final, underscore actual, underscore copy. Um, she, her, and I'm doing my best. <laughs> Android. But like, she's cool. And I, of course, am Cameron Danger Strit Matter, who will be humbly serving the role as warden for your pleasure this evening. This is The Panic Table, season one, Unaccompanied Minor. What a crazy season it's been, and it's only been two episodes. Previously, the entire colony got uh, a little, uh, could have gone worse. Yeah, <laughs> uh, a mysterious prototype mining sensor that could fix a lot of problems for the people here uh, was activated well before it was safe to do so. An electromagnetic pulse wiped out so many of the systems and all of the unshielded androids on the colony. The colony is made up of mostly androids for whom it is much safer, relatively speaking, to go down into the mines of this asteroid. And so now you've just got a bunch of dudes face down waiting to be rebooted. And here we have a gang of... Uh, I was looking for some illiterate <laughs> friends. A gang Bro. of friends, pals. Gang of friends. Of, of, of obsequious spacefarers. Sure. And <laughs> they are headed in different directions. Uh, things were on fire, fires were put out, uh, medical officers were rescued, captains were heavy at work in their central command situations. The central purpose of the mining colony, the, the mine shaft control building that controls how the ore gets up and out of the mine and to the shipping containers, was knocked off of its structure and into the mines because of the well-intentioned activities of our gang of space teens. Wild, wild stuff. So now, <laughs> a few things are happening. Dr. Amina Khan, a helpful geologist and sister to the blast operations manager, plummeted down into the mines with the building. The teens managed to jump free. Eddie, the <laughs> young union teamster played by Anwar Saab, managed to just sort of Heisman the young, extremely attractive, and extremely broken down scientist, extremely doctoral annoying. candidate, India Baker, who at the last minute just couldn't gather her nerves enough to complete the task. They leap from the top of the building, smashing into the side of the central command module, enjoying the one sixth amount of gravity that this asteroid happens to have because of its unusual properties. They escaped to safety. Meanwhile, kicking through the hole that they had laser welder cut through the other side of the building, Darius, the mining operations manager, and you two managed to drag Ravi, the surveyor android who is also unconscious, out of the building just as it slipped from its steadfast columns and the whole thing just went kerblooey. 
down into the chasm. He was so mad like, at you. So mad, like it's okay. Yeah, there hasn't really been an accounting for what's going to happen with Gracie underscore final underscore copy underscore eight. Slip yes. has a, a lot going on for it and hasn't really been able to see the full consequences of her actions yet. He stormed off carrying the downed android, leaving you two to investigate the only fueled ship, a short range <laughs> fighter that the mine's security officer uses to escort the goods on and off of the colony. And it's the same one that brings people coming to from the nearby space station through the asteroid field to here. It's just sitting out there, totally flopping in the wind. As they say, <laughs> flopping in the wind. <laughs> So that's wild, and Barry decided to investigate that because maybe off of this rock is a lot better than in the rock where Elmo, son of the senior technician and best friend as of today of Eddie Elmstead is trapped deep in the mines, wounded. Best friend's a bit of a stretch. Best so friend is, friend. I think, spot on think accurate. That's your best friend. Yeah, it's really, it's really a special time when people become as close as the two of you have. Elmo manages to crackle through on the restored comms that Aisha, the communications expert on the station, started handing out. And he's trapped down in the mines, one of the only organic uh, beings down there, and he's a little bit delirious and a whole lot of bit trusting in you. We rescued UB40, the chief medical officer from the burning laboratory. She has also been knocked out by the EMP blast, but you have set to work being a cybernetics expert uh, on reviving the old rig and seeing what they can do for you in the hallway as Eddie steps into where he's supposed to be posting up as his full-time job in the maintenance bay. Edward. Sorry. <laughs> Went Eddie. full name. Yeah. Went full <laughs> Yeah, serious times call for formal titles. Senor Elmstead. Yes. Abdali. The door. Opens up. Oh, it doesn't, because the power's oh, out. Yeah, you muscle the door aside. It's been a long day, and it's only been about an hour here on the colony since that button was pressed that caused all the fracas. And in the center of the engineering bay over there in maintenance, you see Jackson Reed, the senior engineer for the colony, howling in pain on the ground with an ATV rolled over onto his middle-aged femur. Bruce Hanshaw looks over and we're sort of a, a dark-skinned, handsome guy. I'm getting sort of a, like a, what would you say? A Denzel, but like a little wider around the midsection. You know, I love that. I love Bruce. So Bruce, this is new. Bruce uh, looks over his shoulder and is like, oh, finally, thank God, help me out. And the I two of you, yeah, yeah, no role necessary with two of you. You both grab a side of this ATV and just hoist it back as Jackson nearly passes out from the pain. But fortunately, you're standing there, med pack, uh, the fire, fire extinguisher. extinguisher. You got some comms on a little belt. The ship is yours, my friend. <sighs> I was saving the med pack for Elmo, but I guess I'll go and get another one and use it on Jackson's leg. Jackson, uh, Helen goes, Elmo, what's wrong with Elmo? He... Where's my boy? Is trapped in sub-level two, God which isn't it. that far, right? He already knows not to go in the mines in the first place. He asked you not to tell me any of this, did he? Yeah, but he was giving me a tour of the mines. Oh, God, this hurts so much. We were in a golf cart. And you were probably drinking chai lattes, weren't you? I did not touch those chai lattes. Okay, good. I Terrible. He uses the I dust and like, it's not... Yeah. It's a whole... What oh, are my they leg. made of? Yo! Ugh. All right, we can table that discussion. Yeah. Because, like, his teeth are rotting, man. Like, I'm concerned. Um, the discussion of him screaming in agony is the thing no, we're tabling? No, the chai or? latte oh, okay. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's largely unimportant in the focus of the <laughs> material at hand. <laughs> Bruce is like, really, you should get this together. All right. I'm not trained in uh, med pack, so yeah, Bruce, Bruce takes the, the med okay. pack and is like, uh, I'll do what I can, and sort of starts to prop up his leg as Josh goes, Gah! and he pops it up. Something kind of goes, pop, as ah! he lifts the leg up, and Jackson's like, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to try it. Um, I know this is a bad time, Jackson. Oh, you think? <laughs> do you know? What given, the hell happened? Given the circumstances, some button might have been pressed, but button. let's look beyond the button. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to get down to the mines with some of this machinery that may or may not be busted. Yeah, well, you, you just, uh, 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 my boy, and he full on passes out. Bruce looks at you and he's like, well, yeah, it's not, you just take the mine shaft control, you take the elevator down to the mines and that's. But Bruce, the power isn't working, man. Where have you been? Oh, 
Yeah, I mean, but like the backup power in the generators, like the elevator should still be working down to the mine. What Just head over to Heartbreaker should... Station. I had to jump out of an elevator. He looks out of the shutters. Where there was normally the colossal silhouette of the mineshaft control center, there's just nothing except for the uh, total eclipse, purple light dappled hills of the abyssal ore cluster, 143, Lover's Rock. It's just gone, and he goes, oh, that's what that oh, was. Oh, yeah, it was uh, not a fun time. Yeah. So I right, 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 right. don't want to... <laughs> Yeah. Die. No, dying is bad. Is there I do. something like a machine, like some spider thing that we can crawl the walls on? Spider thing. Spider robot thing. Like this ATV, but cooler. Or like something yeah. that helps us get down there. He, I've got some fun news and I've got some bad news. Let's get the bad news first. Someone, then. there is a backup elevator on site. It's on the other side of the solar fields, which is exciting. There's sort of a site B situation. Um, that takes forever to get to, so I'll have to figure that out on my own, I think, since I'm better suited to do that, because I'm going to take care of Jackson here. Uh, fun news. You ever been repelling? Repelling? Yeah. Low gravity repelling, nothing like it. It's just the best. He starts going over to a storage locker and, like, digs out a harness and some, like, rope and stuff. Easy as pie. I'll show you in just a second, but it's the greatest. We cut away from Eddie looking at this coil of rope and a bleeding man on the ground, and... We cut to the silent loading dock and magrail launch pad <laughs> with the mining colony in the distance, the dim glow of the fires that are happening in some of the modules lighting up the otherwise darkened windows as two space-suited individuals with fried comms attempt to communicate as they... What are we doing? Can you describe what's going on here for me? <laughs> I am uh, hacking into the uh, ship. There is a little... What'd you call it? Just like the maintenance hatch. Maintenance hatch. Yeah. So I've opened the maintenance has hatch to Chance's ship, and now I'm trying to move around some wires and get that thing open so we can get inside. Yeah, like a silvery needle sort of perched at the end of this launch pad in the glistening purple light. There's this fighter jet, mm -hmm. this thing that's used to escort stuff, and you have opted to see if you can hotwire this sucker, yeah. which on its own is its endeavor. Busting into somebody's vehicle is a tricky thing, uh, but you feel like you might be able to get the door open as this is happening, you agreed to take lookout, just in case, because crimes, man. Uh, it's a good thing you've turned around because you see a flashlight beam sweeping across the catwalk uh, on the path from the mining colony headed back your way. You imagine that you have, let's say, two minutes. What's going on about? What? There. It's a person coming. As she's gesturing, you see over her shoulder the light beam sweep across. I fling the thing up and just do a casual lean. <laughs> is he like, from how close is he? Is he like turning the corner like to watch it? Or is he like down the dock? Can he see us basically? You, you go with Operation Play It Cool. Yes. What are you doing as he just throws up the thing and goes for a lean? Um, 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 I, I, I drop to the floor and I start pretending like I'm looking for something. <laughs> a flashlight beam sweeps across the magrail dock, pauses on you scuttling on the ground, oh, oh, just oh. and, and watches it. And you can see beyond that the silhouette of, it can only be Darius, it's a big dude in the back. It pauses for a second and you can see with shoulders that big, even at a distance of like a, a couple hundred feet, shoulders just sigh. As it watches you, the beam follows you scurrying on the ground. He just shakes his head, because he's not out here looking for you, he sweeps and goes back towards the wreckage of the mineshaft control because he knows there was one other person out here and he's got to find it because it's his sister. And so he heads back in that direction. Totally, totally not ready to deal with you right now. <clears throat> I just whip open the, the control panel and get back to work okay, immediately. Yeah, yeah. so is it is it just, is it time to get a little tricky with some wires here? If we, yeah, if we work on it together and use both of our knowledge, yeah. Maybe it will have a bit. Getting a spaceship door open, especially with, with what you've got going for you and a little bit of criminality. Let's say, since you volunteered, you want to just roll, make an intellect check, add your hacking, do it with advantage because Barry's a straight up criminal. Okay. Yeah. Intellect plus plus hacking. Yeah, you roll it Great. twice to symbolize. Or, hey, instead of rolling, roll at the same time and whoever has the better roll, we'll All just right. call it that. That's more fun. What are we working with? Uh. Critical oh, success from. Shit. Wait, what's I your... got an eight. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I got a 35. Unimportant because an eight <laughs> slaps. So <laughs> that's what well, it is. criminal baby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, actually, you, what was that? <laughs> so Gracie flips open the hatch, hands and guts of the wires of the door. You sort of stand back, and as you move your fist, it co- sort of does a cool Fonzie thing, and <laughs> door just opens on the ship as the. Wow. That was great. gangway lights up into this two seater, sort of a, a cool little. Uh, Space Corvette, which is different from a class four Corvette frigate. We don't have to get into that nerd <laughs> stuff. Uh, for those at home reading the manual of the Shipbreakers Toolkit, we're talking about a class zero fighter sort of a thing. Short range, don't at me about this. So, <laughs> door just hisses open, and one of the cooler moves you've ever done in your life. Yeah. Unintentional, but it works, baby. No need to go into that hatch. I imagine you're just gonna pile on into this. I wanna get in and shut the doors and so we can finally talk. Yes. For a second. Yes. I agree. <laughs> that would be you nice. climb into the ship, grab the small <laughs> android in front of you, and just yoink her. <laughs> you can feel the ship pressurizing as you get in, and the soft glow, because he's been on this colony for probably about 15 years, and with nowhere else to spin the credits, Chance has spent a lot of time tricking out this ride. I don't know what he does when he gets shore leave, but it must have something to do with the leather interior on this thing because it is fancy. Little LEDs going on the inside, it's nice. There's a mood in here. Some saxophone music starts to play softly as it says, Welcome, Sergeant. Wild. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) That was great, you did We did it, we're we're gone, we're out of here. Jerry. Crawls up out of your suit and low way into the <gasps> on the on the dash. <laughs> Jerry's sitting on the dash. All right, wait, where do you want to go? Uh, let's get out of here. Well, well uh, let's um, uh, let's go into the mines. That's what you were saying, right? Out. I thought we were saying the same thing. We. You, <laughs> you want to go back to the mines? Elmo's down there. Forget Elmo. Elmo. He's a person. Yeah. There's a bunch of people down there. We, we have this thing. Let's go. You know who else is a person? Me. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> uh, <We're>... No. <laughs> Listen, if we, I, 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 Make I know. Make a composure say. <laughs> I'm not a person. What are you saying? That's crazy. A runnel of what? Android just milky white blood just like pours out of your nose okay. as your stress climbs up a notch. I'm so, I didn't I didn't mean it. What you, what you, well, you said uh, you said I'm not a person. I okay, I uh, I'm sorry. I I'm Did, I You don't mean that. I thought we were friends. We were getting along really well. Yes. Yes. I'm uh, I didn't mean it. Uh, okay. But I'm just saying it's we um uh, we are like oh, I'm so screwed. Like it or not, we're your accomplices now. Is that the word? Uh, okay. Yeah. Well. So we we we're in deep doo doo. Yes. Poopy. Did you see the way that 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 mountain of a man looked at us? I felt the way he looked at me. Yeah. I'm not dealing with that. Well, I I think we're gonna have to. We we can't bear it. And I haven't known you long, but we can't. We can't leave everybody down there. You don't know me. Okay, Mr. <laughs> Mysterious. I, I think I know you well enough to know that you wouldn't just leave all those people down there, right? <laughs> uh, Why uh, did you laugh just now? What does that mean? No, nothing. I've never left anyone to die before. It's ridiculous. <laughs> wow, the way you said that, it seems like. I don't know. All right, move, let's move on. Um, okay. The ship chimes in and says, Welcome, Sergeant. Would you like a cold one, bro? and just an ice cold beer comes out of this tricked out dashboard. It's very much like when I say Corvette, I don't mean a ship, I mean the car. Just picture like two bucket seats. It even has like the like sun visor (laughs) flap things, little uh, joystick pilot thing in the middle, complex array of of, of fighter jet stuff going on there. But yeah, so it's it's very much a just uh, snug two seater with a small passage behind it. I imagine that you're either where do you feel like you're just like standing over these seats, or what's what's the picture I'm looking at here? I picture now we're just in a very narrow hallway, <laughs> just, just, just face to face. That's what like, like, we've been nose talking. Nose yeah, you don't know me. I'm looking straight up. I think I know you well enough. 
Um, Listen here, take. Let's just we we need to talk about this because okay. this is this is. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm I'm not okay with leaving all those people down there. So that that's not an option for me. So if you need to do that, you're gonna have to find another ship. Another ship. Yeah, you're gonna have to just find another ship because this is mine, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go help people with it. So make make your choice. Fine, fine, She's fine. Okay. Fine. <laughs> fine. Right? We can, we can yes. we'll help them. But then, then I, we need eventually. Okay. Once we, we once we help everybody, you you can sailor. What was that? <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> as this conversation goes on, simultaneously in the hallway outside of the burnt out medical bay, where you managed to rescue the chief medical officer and high profile android, the person called UB40. Notable because of she, they, their approach to sort of abandoning their humanity by by artistically removing just pieces of, of their exterior flesh to reveal the beautiful intricacies. In them. Anyway, you're standing over her in the hallway. You've managed to collect in the previous episode uh, the materials you would need to run a diagnostic and kind of get an android up and running. And and what am I picturing here? Like the when we left you, you just kind of like pulled her into the hallway. Yeah. What's, what's what are you picturing? So, did we? Did you just close the injuries that she has sustained? No. So right now you can see that the the EMP is the first thing that has just like when it yeah. hit the whole colony, she just mm, shorted. Wiped. Yeah. And we're like we said, normally androids reboot after a brief EMP hit. Whatever was going on with that prototype mining sensor is extraordinary and has what it seems like not killed, but definitely clocked any android and it's it's blast that wasn't shielded. So she's out. Minor burns, nothing. Okay, so just, it's just mostly getting her back up and running again. Yeah, you gotta get her turned on. Yeah, I think I can do that. Yeah, yeah, so, so you just that. gotta lay her out. Yeah, her. she's on her, I, like there's a protocol I'm sure that, that you have to go through if to prove that the Android is not is not able to consent. Well, yeah, and she, her ID badge is right there. So. so yeah, so she, we're we're in. Um, <laughs> the log shows yeah. that the doctor is working on the doctor. Yeah, I'm here. You access UB40's patch, and you just go ahead and pull out the uh, yeah, core core link probe, which is very. It looks like a little sonogram sort of a situation. It comes with a metal briefcase, and uh, you her. That's kind of my universal noise for doors, isn't it? And there, but it, it slides open cleanly and exposes the spinal duct where the that would allow you to work on the Android. Uh, you plug in, let's make an intellect check uh, and go ahead and add your cybernetics. Yep. And I would say even do this with advantage because this is, this is the India show. Well, it's already good. Yeah. So let's see if it's fantastic. Nine. Nine, exquisite. Yeah, fantastic. You learn a lot, really quick. Interesting things, in fact. Uh, it seems that, one, you know that it'll be pretty easy to get her up and running again. It's, it's a matter of like kind of restoring a backup of a computer, but you've noticed some other mischievous little things. Uh, the chief medical officer here has been making slow upgrades to herself. Some of them are obvious, just some of the miner's arms have been replaced with cool drills and stuff, things that the warranty would not cover, that Blastex Wilson would not condone, but when you're kind of just stuck on a mining colony for 20 years, uh, you get bored, you replace your arms with drills, why not? But some subtle adjustments to their own body, you can tell that UB40 has been self-experimenting quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It would be hard to tell exactly what a lot of these mean, yeah. but one thing in particular on such a good role sticks out that catches your eye immediately, and that is her warranty, the thing that the companies use to keep androids in check. An android normally, as we know, gets to live just about seven years, and then if a company extends their warranty, usually in exchange for labor, uh, they get to keep on living, and it's a bad situation. Her expiration date is zeroed out. Zero, 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 zero. But you know she's not done for. Yeah. It's just not. It's not there. She doesn't have one. It's gone. Was it zeroed out in the EMP blast? Or had it been, do you think that was you part get of the, her? On a nine? Yeah. This was whatever that signal was. You realize that suddenly the confines of synthetic death no longer have a hold on UB40. You don't know that yet. As you take in this knowledge, is this a situation where you think you would make a save of some kind? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fear of composure, your choice. Oh, man, that's messed up. <laughs> I'm true to my cause. Okay. 
Um, is that a zero? Yeah, yeah, but it's it's definitely no, no, not 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 credit. Just a regular, yeah. Uh, you gain a point of stress. As you be forties, eyes flutter open, and she goes, "Hey, beautiful." Hi. She goes, oh, "Look at me, looking toasty. What a mess." Oh, <laughs> thank you. And she takes the scrape mm-hmm. scanner back, and she says, "Whoa, what did I miss? This is wild." Oh. She sees the medical bay behind you. Yeah. Did you? Yes. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. I really appreciate it. No, of course. Um, you mind if I take a look at how am I doing? And she grabs oh. the information in mm-hmm. front of you. She says, thank you. Yeah. And just as quickly as you noticed, you see her lock in. Yeah. She goes, well, <laughs> this can't be right. Wait, you didn't do that? This can't be right. Wait. Wait, so you didn't do that? What what are you what are you talking like you didn't make the change? What do you mean? I very much appreciate what you've done for me. Um a uh, lot of uh attention it seems. I met some sort of EMP sort of situation. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um let's start bringing the other androids home. Let's get them in here and we can start the I just Can you give me a minute? Um thank you so much. Uh Wait, no. Uh, I'm going to talk to you soon and she just walks uh, uh. away from you, holding uh, the, the scanner for the moment and takes it back into her lab. Uh, she retreats into one unscorched corner of it where there's kind of like an office thing and just closes the door behind her and she sits down and you just see on her somewhat skeletal face, uh, slightly unnerving, beautiful eyes up top, just jaw exposed and now slightly singed on the side of her head as she just goes back over the data again and again and then she shakes her head and you see she jacks the coiling probe back into her spine and goes and starts to run another mm-hmm. diagnostic on herself. You sense that perturbing her further would be uh, a faux pas, but but you could. This is the situation that you were suddenly just left in. Yeah. Right here. As you were looking at her do this, uh, a voice from over your shoulder says, well, that was quick thinking. The scanner would be a, you turn to see uh, Dr. Kapoor. This is all quite impressive. She's sipping a saucer of tea and looks fabulous. Yeah. Where the rest of the colony is in shambles, uh, the doctor woke up from a nap. This is Baker, yes? Yes. Oh, hi, Dr. Kapoor. Hi, I'm India Baker, but you knew that already because you said my name. And you booted up UB40 all by yourself. Yeah, no, I um, I read an article that you wrote um, a while ago on curling probes. And you saw I that. kind of, yeah, no, it was really good. And um, I just like was really inspired. And I, I kind of, I just thought in the moment, like, oh my God, she's down. Like, what can I do? And I thought, okay, like curling probes. You and read my I, undergraduate thesis. I did, yeah. <laughs> oh, so you used the workaround that I suggested yes. for in the double dying models yes, after yeah, seeing Yeah. yeah. Just no, it's a, it slips was really, right in and they boot up. And yeah, it was really wow, inspired. Wow, <laughs> really sensational work. Yeah. We should talk more often. This is something that yeah. I don't... I'm yeah. so sorry. I could, uh, I could come to your... What did um, you do? I could come with you now if that was cool. Or no, now if it's cool. It I'm would just... be my privilege. Oh my God, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, I think okay. uh, that order should be restored immediately because this is not an acceptable situation. Oh, yeah, no, no. I was, I was just saying the exact yes. same thing Absolutely. about the situation, yes. uh, so I'm wait, glad you said it. Wouldn't you me. join me to no, no, oh command? God, I would, I would, she takes oh your God, arm no, and says, but, yeah. <laughs> very impressive what you've done. Oh my God, yeah, no. I, she um, gives you B40 a wave as they walk by the office yeah. and starts to escort you through the burnt medical lab towards Central <laughs> Command. Eddie. Eddie? <laughs> On the exterior, standing outside again, of the modules that make up the colony. You look over the formerly sunny, rosy gorge, now a deep, inky purple as the eclipse has fully taken effect, darkening everything around you. You stare down into the crevasse and over the restored comms that you've given to Buster. Bruce. Bruce. He finishes driving one of these like mechanical stakes into the ground. That just <laughs> and he's like pulling a rope that he's fastened and tied some sort of complex climber's knot to He's like, Oh, should hold easy. And then, should? Yeah, one six gravity, easy peasy. I just, so, I think probably the best thing to do is just pop on down. You know about the escape chutes. You took the tour. Should be easy enough for you. My tour uh, was cut halfway through when the mine shaft yes. went to crap. So I, please explain. You're gonna need a flashlight. That's what I think. And so he reaches into his pack, hands you one of those. He goes, I'd go myself, but I think it's just really important that I get to all of the other excruciatingly important maintenance needs around here. And Jackson's not gonna do too well. Okay. Rock in a hard place. Am I right? Absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, it's a clip skew. Uh, I recommend going ass first over the edge. That's how I like to do it. And really, you let the rope guide you. It's like falling off a log, except it's a cliff. Are there any, like, safety measures? Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't go too fast. That would be absurd. Sick. Great, great, yeah. great, great, great. Um, so, just for, like, map sake, I'm jumping out of this, like, yellow spot where the X is. Yeah, let's say for our purposes that just kind of like at the corner of that sky bridge right there where the, yeah, absolutely. Yes, let's put you right there outside of the garage bay door. You are secured to a pretty beefy stake that's in the ground there. Now, you, are you sure you can do this? He says, you look a little squeamish. No, I'm not sure if I can do this, but you can't do it. We agree on so, that. Yeah. Um, it's extremely dangerous. But you just said it was safe. I'm gonna head back on in and work no, on some what do you things. <laughs> and will you stay uh, on comms with me at least? 110 percent. You got me, kid. I got you. I feel like you're lying to me. We really need to get Elmo out of the mines. I think that that's probably the most important thing. Okay. Can you agree? Um, Cam, where would you like? This is where we were before, right? Uh, that is where you were. Yes. So, like, Doctor Amina fell somewhere. Like right in the middle. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Because as it like tilted, it just kind of went straight down. Okay. I was gonna see if I could kill two birds with one stone, but I mean, I think I think finding the doctor is not a bad idea. We don't actually know what happens when somebody yeah. falls um, off screen. Okay. Are you up for this? I don't want to put you in a situation you don't want to be in, and I'm feeling extremely irresponsible as a grown Bruce, man. It doesn't feel like you're gonna put me. It feels like I'm being voluntold, and just say what it is. You look strong. That's what I'm thinking. He like has his arms on your space and it's like, it's just, you seem like a guy who could do this. If I die, yeah. I am coming back to haunt you. Spooky. Is that fair? It's fair. Okay. All right. Hey, kid. Really, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Done it once, you've done it a thousand times. I promise. I was just messing with you about the extremely dangerous thing, but it's dangerous, so no, just look out. It's not extremely dangerous. It's just regular. It's, it's like super dangerous, <laughs> but, you know, I'm just... Look, I don't know how to act around kids, uh, and that's uh, you're gonna do so great, and it just super needs to happen. I'm, uh, I'm jumping. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you just kind of back it up over the ledge. It does feel secure. Is it pitch black? You have uh, quite a bit of light sources on. Like your your suit already has built in like shoulder lamps on the thing. This is just that standard mining hazards you've been wearing the whole day. It smells like your sweat on the inside. It's not great. Yeah. It like the dust lavender. kind of clogs all of the stuff. I think while well, routine when you're in and out is that you kind of kick the pink dust out of the filters and yeah. put it back in. But still, after a while, that chalky dolomite flavor just kind of fills everything. Like unpleasant cocoa puffs. Okay. So like as I'm going down. Would I be able to like look around? Oh yeah. Yeah, just to like see if I can spot. Here's a cool thing. These mining suits, the second they hit the, the they, they, they go at like the 90 degree angle, have these handy little like climbing spikes like situation that just comes out. And this isn't actually hard. I'm not gonna test you on anything unless you okay. wanna do something wild. It's a nice ride down. All right, so I wanna get down to the, cause Elmo's in sub level two. Elmo is deep down there right now, yeah. Okay, I so. wanna get down to sub level one. Mm -hmm. Kind of just do a peek, see, see if like I see any androids. I see anybody really still there. Yeah, as you dangle over the edge and the the purple light sort of spackles down your it, your lights. It's it's so far down that they're only just barely glazing. Yeah. You can see the wreckage of the mineshaft control building. It's gonna take you. Uh, I mean, if you're going at a leisurely pace down the side of this thing, like 15 minutes, uh, Bruce. Check, check, check it out. Okay, it's working. Great. Yeah. Yeah. What channel was Elmo on? Uh, I think I told him to go on three, but he was... I tried three, I don't know if he... It's good you're going down there, he says. Uh, you know what, let's try two. They'll probably get pissed, but... Good idea, yeah. Elmo. Okay, yeah. guess not. We'll find him, don't worry. Yeah, so you look down, it looks like it's gonna be... Was there anything that you were hoping to find on your way down? The... Just any sign of, like... Dr. Khan or okay, yeah. an android or, or somebody that... Today has been a bad day. Yeah. This is almost beautiful. Wow. Yeah, like the stars glitter above you. The the pink rock has sort of this rosy... A thousand shark teeth. Like a thousand <laughs> shark's teeth. But yeah, for a moment, you've kind of just got this somewhat safe situation to yourself. He was right, just kicking off the wall, bouncing easy down. 
could be a lot worse, but it's almost relaxing. Um, because you just willingly threw yourself into this, let's 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 take a little, little stress off. Just, just the one, yeah. It's, just the one. Yeah, it's nice. You're either brave or you're stupid, but there you go. I'm gonna come back to you. I'm proud of you, Eddie. Just Cameron. So, oh. <laughs> thanks, Dad. <laughs> so what exactly? What what? Okay, how are we gonna? Do Both of you are just sitting in the seats of this fighter jet. <laughs> Passing back and forth the beer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, that was a question. Can androids get drunk? Yeah. Ah, nice. <laughs> Okay, so I think we need to like we need to look for comms and get in touch with Eddie All and right. see if he got out of the elevator. Would uh, Chance happen to have any comms in his ship that we could uh, any? Uh... Oh yeah, yeah. There's a full comms array in there. Okay. Yeah. So what channel should we should we just? Try all of them. All of them. One. Sorry, one. <laughs> you you would okay. you would know how to use uh, oh, yeah. yeah so you, comms, we'd yeah. know what channel to go on to. It, I don't think you need to test to use the thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some knobs, some switches. It's not a system you're familiar with, but they're like supposed to be uniform because mm -hmm. that's how people communicate. So. Okay. Ed Eddie, is Eddie on this channel? Eddie. Try the next channel. <laughs> Eddie. Wait, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is Eddie on this channel? From the other end of this, you say, you hear it, God damn it, who's in my ship? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you go in the car? Mary, uh, I swear to Christ, if that is you, I'm going to <laughs> Try uh, channel three. Okay. <laughs> Eddie? Yes? Eddie, where are you? Why do you sound like that? Where, where are you? Tell me where you are right now. I am climbing down to the mine, very peacefully. Into the mine? Why are we calling Eddie? Because I want to know. I don't know. You called me, man. I'm not talking to you. Why Eddie. are you going back into the mine? Uh, Elmo's in the mine. You're going to get Elmo? Apparently, that's what I'm doing. Do you know if anybody else is in the mine? No idea. I'm taking my sweet time going down to see if anyone's left. Okay, do you know where exactly he is down there? He said sub level two. Sub-level two? But I am just working my way down this giant rock that I hope leads to sub-level. That's what Bruce told me anyway. Bruce, are you still on comms? Yep. Hey, bud, what's up? Nothing, just just making sure you didn't abandon me. Hanging in there? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. Right, wow, just a little mine shaft here yeah, for you. that's yeah. cool. Thanks, man. Love you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Doot. Um. <laughs> what, what, what Time are we to make do? a decision. Uh, what are I, we to do with that information? Uh, now we, well, we have confirmation that Elmo's okay and that somebody else is going down there. They're, they're not going to be able to carry injured people back up. I don't know how they're getting down there, but we can fly everybody out. Don't you see? You want to fly the ship into the canyon? Barry, I have a great feeling about this. This is going to go really well. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> what 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 would the dice <laughs> be saying about this choice? To fly into the canyon. Can can we look for an operator operator's guide? Yeah. Great. Is I mean, he a pilot? Yeah, I know how to fly this. Yeah, it's, I know how to fly. Hey, I don't know how to fly within a canyon. Hey, I'll be your navigator. I'm gonna get the guide book. Right. Okay. So you like open the the equivalent of a spaceship glove box. Yep. You're looking around. Uh, in your search, there's no guidebook. Oh. You, yeah. You, you you open the glove box and there's just more cold ones. <laughs> the, the, they're called cold ones. Looking over the like sun flap, uh, the keys to the spaceship just flop in your lap. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to just operate a like fighter class thing without any sort of ID keys. But I mean, he's just kept it right here on the dash the whole that's, time. That's so funny. Here you go. <laughs> Good catch. Um, that was good. <laughs> okay, um, so, <sighs> listen, if you really are, in, like, insistent on going down there and helping people, there's another safer way. We could fly the, uh, there's, I've, there's another entrance to the mine in the solar fields. We can fly the ship there. We'll be there, like, in two seconds and uh, go down there. We can only, uh, we, we're not going to be able to help the whole mine. Also, this ship only carries two people, so it's, we're not really bringing much people up. I'm just being real. That's what Barry does. 
You're sure that the ship doesn't carry more than two people? Was that in third person? That's what, yeah. Barry, does. <laughs> That's what Barry does. Is you're Barry. I'm a, yes, I am. And I'm a fact man. What? This is known. <laughs> Make a composure save. <laughs> and then. Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, no, 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 yeah. no, aggressive. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Your nose also starts to bleed. It's just regular blood. Both of you have nosebleeds. It's the same Android yeah. stuff. What's going on? Oh my God, you guys are the same. Um, well, okay, well, if you're, if you're sure, um. I, that's our only, I, I, I think I, I draw the line at drawing, flying this thing to the canyon. And you're sure that there's another entrance? I'm positive. I've been here. Gone down there. <laughs> what the fuck? We cut to <laughs> the <laughs> Central Command Station, where you, perched on uh, Dr. Kapoor's arm, the chief security officer, Chance, just storms him like, fucking ship, as he oh. goes and just powers through the room, and it's just <laughs> oh, no, gone. No. <sighs> just out, elevator down, you see him just climbing outside of the building as the captain watches that go and goes, you were saying, Dr. Kapoor. And Dr. Kapoor says, oh, it's simple, really. Uh, there is another entrance on the other side of the solar fields, and I think it would be important for us to go down there, and I think uh, we can rescue anybody who's down there. Uh, I think, most importantly, it's critical for us to get off of this rock. I think we can all agree, especially with the only source of our livelihood completely destroyed. This mission has been terminated. As chief science officer, I will get in touch with Blast X Wilson and we will cancel the mission. I, for one, am tired. Uh, you can see that there's not a power struggle here. This woman just outranks everyone, even Carol Thompson, who's been here for two decades. And so shoulders just sort of deflate. She says, Carol says, <clears throat> she's right. Um, I would say the most efficient way uh, would be to head to the auxiliary mining site on the other side of the asteroid. There's a dropship that's just been sort of left there, and that would be the easiest way to get the most survivors out on time. It would be a trek. Uh, and Dr. Kapoor is like, the auxiliary mining site, that's, that's perfect. Um, well, all we would need is the geologist's uh, credentials to get through because she had been on site the longest. So, easy peasy. Uh, let's get, uh, doc you were with Dr. Khan. Um, let's go get her. Let's get her ID card. And uh, she would be able to give us access to um, the original site. So, she was the yeah, purveyor uh, before. Uh, Dr. Kapoor. <laughs> yes. Um, my queen. Um, I just, um, <laughs> it's the craziest <laughs> story. Just, yeah. um, but <laughs> Aisha's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> the craziest story, but as of right now, we don't exactly know where Dr. Khan is located specifically. See, you said a lot of things and then you said the word specifically, right. but I didn't get any specifics out of that. Right. <laughs> and Carol scoots forward and says, where is Dr. Khan? Okay, so specifically, we um, don't know where she is. Generally, she fell into the mine shaft with the Heartbreaker Station. She could be alive. She could also n not. There's a word for not alive. Is there? Kapoor turns and says, well, not to worry. Ah, uh, you will go down and get her. Simple as that. And then, together, we may exit in an orderly fashion and abandon this godforsaken asteroid and move on to a better and brighter venture. I will speak with the company as soon as Valentine is back online, but I declare this a failed venture. Uh, I leave it to you to settle the rest of it, and she walks out. The captain turns to you and says, well, you heard the captain. Right. <laughs> okay, well. She turns to Aisha and she's like, I swear, these ICS types. Okay, well. Look, okay, 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 <laughs> okay. Aisha says, I'm not going down there. Well, okay. Click, click, I, click, 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 click. Um, where <laughs> is that, um, what's his name? Oh my God. Um, uh, shoot. Um, and at uh, Ethan, uh, uh, Eric? We hard cut to the edge <laughs> of the chasm 
where you suited up. Yeah. Bruce is like, it's simple, really. It's like falling off a log. <laughs> this is pretty secure. <laughs> Eddie's about halfway down. Wait, Eddie, who are you talking to? You're Eddie. I mean, Bruce, who are you talking to? <laughs> oh, man, my bad. Yeah, Bruce. yeah, the mind sort of gets to you, right? It's yeah. those nightmares and things. It's, it's wild. Oh, yeah, heads up, buddy. Uh, you got company. Who's company? Hey, you, <laughs> Eric. Uh, um, no uh, way. I don't really, what, sorry, I, I know your name. I'm just, yeah, yeah no. <laughs> yeah, I, the evil witch of the West knows my name. Okay, relax. Um, I thought it would be great for us both to go down and, you know, rescue some minors slash a minor slash Dr. Khan slash Dr. Khan's badge. So I'm just gonna come with ya and I'm just gonna poke around for two seconds and grab that little badge and then I won't be out of the way and we can get out of here and um, save Somebody everyone. Somebody ordered you to do this, didn't they? No, I... I you don't I, strike me as like the saving guy. I kind. took initiative, you wow. know what I mean? I, I, I am a, a... And Dr. Kapoor trusts me, you know, oh. with this. Bruce is like, you're gonna need a flashlight. So he just sticks that in your hand. He says, you just clip on here. She's still wearing heels. The, because your other shoe was, suit was smashed, you yeah. are now in a in dingy, a stinky miner's outfit. There are no heels. He was like, oh, clear on that one. Spotted it from a mile away. How does it smell? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I want to talk like about lavender, right? Oh, like lavender, right? <laughs> can we just go into the shaft, please, so that I can rescue um, uh, the key card? Wow. Sorry, um, Dr. Khan. Person. Dr. Khan. <laughs> 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 just sorry. You Not are just a her card. The person. <laughs> the person, Dr. Khan. <laughs> this is going to be fun. So much. <laughs> Inside the escort ship. Great. I'm going to turn the comms off. Let's go now. Okay. Do your plan right now. All right, let's go. What is your plan? Do we go get a drop ship or do we just go? We're in the ship. Let's go to the okay. solar panel thing because that'll take like a minute now. It let's... would be significantly less dangerous than you Going trying to. Going to the site. To... Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go do that now. Let's go do it. Okay, um, how can I help you? you nothing. Please let me drive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do not <laughs> sit there, have another yeah. beer if you need. At, at, when I look around, do I recognize anything with this with my knowledge of computers? Do I look, know anything that I'm looking at? These are computers. Great. <laughs> so, um, I know a little bit. I, I just be quiet, but I could help you for sure. I plug the keys in. It just feels right. It's been a while since I've driven a ship and not been in a mine. Just uh, feels right. I, I peek over your shoulder and just like... <gasps> And for a moment, like it's been a long day. Both of you have some weird nervous nosebleed situation from all of the stress. <laughs> this guy's in his element. And for a moment, you see a person relatively where they're supposed to be in this life. And maybe it's that you were built to be 17. Maybe that's it's, he's only a little bit older, but Perry looks magnificent for just a minute. <laughs> Um, I was, I, in, in this whole thing, I was like slowly leaning over his shoulder and looking at him. So when he, when he swished his hair around, it just. <laughs> Wait, you're not sitting next to him. You're like over his chair. Yeah. You've got full gremlin. Yeah. <laughs> it was a really special moment. Ship feels right. Powers up. You turn on the heated seats. You know what to do. And yeah, for this, it's just a, like. Been a while, you're a little rusty, so it's just a normal piloting check mm -hmm. just to get this thing up the ground. The controls are a little different than what you're used to. You usually flew frigates and stuff. So yeah, the ship has its own stats, as we've talked about. So for this one, you're gonna do, I would say, just a thrusters check. We've rolled up the ship. Um, yes. It's called Melinda, by the way. Ooh, love that. Yeah. And Melinda purrs as the ignition. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, so you just, you're going to roll uh, your, yeah. So this, you're checking it against the Melinda's thrusters specifically, mm -hmm. and you're adding your piloting to that, so. Um. Fail. Okay. As you take off, it all comes back to you. It's, it's very much like a da -da dun 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 when you hold me like that. But the thrusters engage, you lean back, you shake off the weirdness. <laughs> and as it leaves the ground, very easily uh, exiting its landing sequence, 
into a pool, man. The ship seamlessly rotates as you point it towards where you guess the other thing is, and you turn to look at uh, Gracie next to you, and as you do, the ship just clips to the <laughs> side of the, the loading dock situation. You just bump it into a crane on its aft tail, and the ship takes some damage. Um, yeah. Not enough to it to matter right now. Yeah, you gain a little bit of stress because that's not great. Yeah. And you jettison off to the other side of the solar fields together. So you flop as Chance is sprinting across the catwalk, just <laughs> spouting obscenities that I will not repeat. As you lean back into the plush leather interior, the saxophone music playing, that you look over and you notice just in like one of the, the cup holder situations that he's got there. There's like scented candles, and we just get a really clear picture of how Chance spends any of his free time in this thing. If I light one of those scented candles, could that distress, is, does any of this do something for the stress? My enjoyment. This of scented the candle would absolutely do that for the stress. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The one. yeah. The <laughs> ship is like candle on, and sort of a freshly baked cookie scent fills oh. the. And you look over, and uh, there's this girl next to you, and you're just both cruising into the last fingers of dawn. This 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 weird final expression on the curve of the asteroid as you clear the horizon and move on and. You got nothing but time on your hands, a ship right at your fingertips, and she's all right. Asteroid seven or eight, what do you do? The This might be not the worst day anymore. Your stress goes down by one, and suddenly, for the first time in a long time, you're just Barry. So, uh, <clears throat> about um, back there with the uh, <laughs> like cylinder gonna fall on me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I like had that under control, but like, yeah. Thanks. You are welcome. First time on a ship? Um, no. But first time in a ship like this. Mm. I've never, I've never seen just open flame candles on on a spaceship. You know, this ship's wild. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen this before. <laughs> Chance is crazy. <laughs> yeah. He's pretty cool. Mm. Um, I just like I start reaching toward, um, <laughs> toward toward Barry's face. Stress. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what, and, what, what are you doing? And I grab. <laughs> my hand is right next to his his like right ear, and I grab Jerry by the scruff of his neck. <laughs> Sorry. He, no. Scurries around sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm cool. I'm cool with animals. I like yeah. them. That's a that's a really cool uh, did you amphibian think, you got there. It's yeah. Sorry to reach. Out. Did you think I was gonna like <laughs> brush your hair out of your face or something? If you want to? Been, it's so. cool. You can do that. <laughs> In the mines. <laughs> okay. After a day of mostly chaos. Starting with corporate infrastructure shenanigans and ending in just true ruin, you, doing a job you are not qualified for, land gracefully. Gracefully, it's, it's Bruce wasn't wrong. This was actually a kind of safe. You land, and the dreamlike feeling fades as even just as you set foot down here, it just feels gross, different. The mood, and it's not just the wreckage, it's something deep down inside you is heavy. It's not the past, it's not what's happened, it's here. It's not my lunch. It's also probably your lunch a little bit. Shouldn't have had a little sip of chai latte. Chai latte. It's unnerving because the rock itself uh, glows just ever so slightly, so it's not the darkest. And and as your, your flashlight beams refract off of the different edifices of jewels and then things. There's the glints and the sparkles. Uh, as you turn alone down here, you see something scurry just out of the corner of your light. Uh, Bruce? He doesn't respond, but you get the idea that he's probably just busy right now. God, fucking girl. Yeah, you, you uh. get the sense that you're not alone. Okay. Wait, why did, you, why did you call Bruce? Because uh, behind you, 
lands. How far? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wait, why did you call Bruce? What did, What do you need from Bruce? What's happened? Uh. I'm gonna give you a little stress relief too because you've like. I was singing. I repelling is a joy. Yeah, and I imagine myself singing. Um, <laughs> just as my it's my way to calm myself when things get weird. We have got, got no rhythm. rhythm. Yeah, I've been listening to this for the last hour. I don't need no no. Hey, why are we calling Bruce? George Michael is rolling over on his grave right now. Okay, um, you know George Michael. Come on, I love the 80s music. Like the real 80s music, not this bull caca 80s we're in right now. You know, that's not a curse word. Over the radio, Bruce is like, hey, I was busy with language, dude. Come on. <laughs> it's bull caca. Well, I guess you're not the worst person I've ever met. So I guess you do have okay taste if you like the real 80s music. The real 80s, yeah. Um, not to freak you out, I think there's something down here. What, 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 I don't what, know what? what? Uh, so I said not to freak you out. No, 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 I don't know, I don't know, no, 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 what, what, what is, is it a person? I is it a place? Know. Is it a thing? I what is it? What did you see? I saw a shadow move when I flashed my flashlight that way. A shadow? It went like, chuk, 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 chuk,
out. We'll figure it out. Do you even know where we are exactly? No, that's what I'm hoping. Oh my god. Oh my god. So the, the new kid's gonna figure it out. Lucky me. The channel crackles the life and over the radio you hear. Eddie? Thelmo? Hey, man. You're alive. I mean, you're still okay. You gotta come see this, man. It is beautiful down here. Wait, what do you see? It's almost as though it's he didn't chime in at all because the silence that follows is just total as okay um right so so if uh, you were dr khan no where would you fall from we, the angle if you were yeah, to land really gonna ask that question look in order for us to get out of this thing right in front of us is the thing that collapsed so she right. can't be that far from here so we should if she fell so i think that we should go where we think she fell so that we can see if she's alive, because I do care about her life, yeah, not just her, not the key card, not just her card. No, no not me. Never, <laughs> I no, would never. You're, you're a very I care about her life. Person, yeah. So let's go and see if she's there. You know, because I think that would be really good for us to check on where she is exactly and where her body is. As you make your way to the wreckage, you pass uh, the clearly marked pneumatic escape tubes that would be just here at the mine's entrance and that have been installed. Uh, there's sort of a, a generator that's been beaten to hell in the fracas of the thing, but it looks like it has what it needs to be activated, these things to where you get the sense that just sort of like one of those bank yeah. teller machines, you could just hop in and boom, these would go up if if Fabulous. running. So uh, that answers your question, That's but it's just out. clearly marked in yeah. a very corporate responsibility OSHA kind of way okay. on the, the way, and they seem to have survived this just fine, um, built into a separate piece of the rock. It seems like it would spit you out just kind of where that green circle is right there. Wow, very convenient. Yeah. Wait, that green circle or where I jumped down on? Uh, no, the, this green circle right here. Yeah, so it, it's sort of like a power slide. They're not tube straight up, it's more like a whoop through yeah. the, the rock situation. So, the, so there is a way out. Once we, once it, we, okay. it looks like it. Yeah, right. yeah. The, you get the sense that they're probably not in great shape, but uh, nothing is down here right now. Okay. Let me just check the generator to make sure it's still running. Okay. Um, properly. Yeah. You want you want to just do like a quick assess? Yeah. yeah you got some industrial engineering. Yeah, I have, the, and, and ooh, mechanical beep, repair. Beep. Oh. Yeah, I have yeah. mechanical repair. So Intel that's, check. Yeah, just that's do it right why. Off the bat. You got this. Yeah. Hopefully. You got this. <laughs> That is great. Aren't you like a scientist? Okay. Well, I, 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 I thought I had this. I was very close to having it, but I am a little Stressed. off. But hopefully it's it's working. Hopefully it, yeah. it works. And, and so you, you fiddling with yeah. the generator, uh, it absolutely does work with just a few switches and a little bit of duct tape there. I'm imagining that Bruce sent you down with like a standard kit. Like a kit, just, yeah, like a tool some, kit. Duct tape, some med spray, a couple of tools on you, just standard survival gear type stuff, nothing wild. But yeah, you do get it up and humming. Uh, it works and uh, you can see that the pressure is starting to build that's required yep. to, to help them. You also notice that the fuel tank attached to it has just a nice, neat hole dinged in the bottom. Um, that seems like it'll either take time to repair or just yeah, probably has. You could, you could, you could and do if you'd like to tape it, but yeah. it's not a permanent fix. And so you get the sense that you maybe got one or two clean exits out of here, is the thing. So it works. You take a little bit of stress. One or two people. One or two people, or like we can go. How many people can go in the? Um... Without more fuel, this probably has two good oomps in it. How many people can go in at once? One. Yeah, water slide style. You get in and. So yeah, you would need to find more fuel to get this to work and. That gives you pause in case you come out of here with more people. Yeah. Right. So we'll need to find fuel too. Okay, so it works. Add it to the list. Yeah, it works, but we need to, so, okay. Key card, Elmo, and fuel. Well, Dr. Khan. There you go, huh? <laughs> you got um, So, Dr. Khan, mm-hmm. Um, As you're talking, a uh, ship just. <laughs> so, wait, what was that? <laughs> no, no, you saw that, right? flying a ship right now. Do you have comms? I do. Yeah, we, we Oh my god. Wait, what? Hold on. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the edge of the solar fields, the comms crack of life. Crazy. Who is this? <laughs> really? That's the voice you're going to go with? Who, uh, Eddie? Yeah. Hey. Are you guys on this ship? Define on. Oh my god. Define Wait, ship. If you guys have a ship, you guys need to come get us out of the mine right now. We do not have a ship. What do you have? What do we see flying? Nothing. Our, 
that space bird. How do you have access to comms? I have all the radios. How? Hey, how are you? How are you guys doing? We're. Wait, wait, no, no, don't oh. change the subject. Hey, India. Who was, if you guys weren't the one flying uh, that ship. Listen, the only thing yeah. I want to hear from your guys' mouth is thank and you because we're coming to your rescue. Uh, so you've got space in the ship that you are flying? Not exactly, no. But so then, how are you coming to? Yeah. Our... Well, Why are you guys what? asking so many questions? We're gonna help. You know, you're in a ship and we're in the mine. I'm sorry if I'm asking a couple of questions. You know, for two people at the bottom of a broken down mine, you don't sound very grateful. You haven't. But for the what? Helping hands. Everyone helping do needs what? A helping hand today. She's singing. Everyone needs. I think it's her version of singing. <laughs> yeah, I and mean, you see why I can't stand her, honestly. That, oh, you heard I, me. I, just yes, bit. I heard you. Like, no Sorry. Name. Circling above this, you <laughs> see that there's a couple of options of like places to land. I'm gonna have you test again because it, there's not like a landing pad over here. It was not intended for for that. So it'll be dusting off the old skills as you do a piloting check. Okay. Smooth landing. I want to see if there's anything on the ship that will tell me if there is life, like a bio scanner. Oh, great. Yeah. So you look around in the different compartments. Uh, there are several things you see. Okay. A bunch of pinups, uh, sort of a thing like like folded up and stored away. There's like <laughs> Miss New New Florida, Black Star Station, Babes, oh. Oh. Uh, all of these things. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> underneath the space smut. There is a beautiful, gleaming pistol. It's an antique uh, revolver, as a matter of fact. It's not even like the new like colonial issue standard stuff. This is from like the early days. Um, looks like it's probably a family heirloom or something, but it's really nice. Hey. Yeah, hey. nickel plated or something. Check this out. <laughs> it says Melinda on it. Mm. it. Looks pretty old. It looks expensive. Should we shouldn't, we should, really, this looks important. We should. Yeah, and expensive. Um, does he have any other guns on the ship? Absolutely. Yeah, let's, let's, let's. Let's leave this one. Let's maybe, you know, leave that one. I'll I want to continue one. looking for anything that might be like a bioscanner or a med kit. Med kit, absolutely. Okay. No, there's no bioscanner. Okay, okay. Yeah, this fighter just wouldn't, yeah, it's wouldn't not something have, it would have. Okay. There's just some stowage there. And opening that up, there is a beautiful, combat shotgun in there. <sighs> and then on the other side is a, a submachine gun. Can I get both? Yeah. All right, I will pick up both of those guns. Yeah. Grace, here is a knife. <laughs> you look up and you see Barry's just strapped. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you are, you've got guns on you. Yeah, I, um, I'm no, um, I was something of a hunter in my past. So I, uh, Mysterious. Love guns. They're... What if you hunt? Yeah. Um, should we head into the mines? Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you exit the ship with just dripping with weapons. So uh, scared of chance. <laughs> oh, these are to defend you from chance. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yes. So exiting this, you see the standard sort of industrial mine shaft. Looks very much like the ones that were in the Heartbreak Station. You also see beyond that uh, a low structure uh, that is completely dark that uh, is just labeled like advanced battery and that's off to the side as well with a monster conduit of cabling going back through the fields and that's just next door to that. Is there anything else like useful from before we've left the ship? Is there like a flare? Yeah. Actually, yes, there would actually be. Right next to the, the bed kit, there's just a flare gun. Flare gun. Yeah. Ah. Standard SOS stuff. Flare gun, med kit, stim pack. Grenade? Uh, uh, and absolutely Why? a grenade. God. Yeah. I'm going to blow more things if there's, up. Haven't yeah. you done enough? Give the children all the guns. That's what we do. Yes, you are stacked. <laughs> yeah. So you, you come out with guns, guns, like combat knife. You come out holding a single to grenade. <laughs> to rescue people like from like a this. mine shaft. <laughs> Like you're rescuing us, aren't you? Or do you have another plan or something? Looking at all this, like we'll probably need all this stuff. This, this is, this is what adults do. 
med kit, knife, grenade. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is what adults do, right? Right. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so you can tell just by looking at it, the this station has been affected just like everything else by the EMP. So the elevator is not up and running. Advanced battery is dark and it's a long, low building. In the mine shaft, you've pressed into the the underside of Heartbreaker Station, which you were just in a few hours ago. It looks different. A little bit. As you walk in, you see things with too many legs just skittering out of sight. Not large, Plural. but numerous. Oh. Uh, let's go ahead and have both of you just make a little fear save here. <laughs> oh no, mine's it. Wait, two critical fails? Yes. It's been a long day. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's time to roll on the panic table, I think. So, uh, what? tell me about stress really quick. I'm at 14. You're at... 14. 16 now. Uh, did you take one stress from that or? One, yeah. Yeah, let's stack on two. Let's let's do it. It's, it's a little bit scary. How about you? Now we're at 13. Yeah, let's go bump you up to 15. Who would like to uh, roll on the panic table first? I will roll. Go nuts. It has to be higher. You are aiming for higher than your current stress. Oh, it rolls off 20. <laughs> so it's 13. I'm more, I'm too below. I missed it. Oh, no. Anwar, I would love for you to make the panic check next. I'm going to tell you what a 13 is because oh, it no. is bananas. Oh, but no. first. <laughs> Trauma response? Seems like the time, doesn't it, for a teamster? Yeah. So I roll with advantage. Yeah. Come on. Once per session. Was that four? Yeah. Fudge. Aim high, baby. 19. Yes. You keep it together. It's, it's probably nothing. You look as <laughs> India is quivering. India. You okay? It's already been enough as it is. Someone needs to pay for this. You are affected with a death wish. Specifically, for 24 hours, whenever you encounter a stranger or a known enemy, you have to make a composure save or immediately attack them. Mood. I can do that. You're up to here. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> She's bugging. You even more keenly get the sensation that you are not totally alone here at the bottom of this crag in the dark. India, relax. I, a, A, A. I think they're just bugs. <laughs> but like, they won't. Bugs. I don't know, not like bees or wasps or birds. <gasps> not like, they're worse than bees or wasps? No, they're like... bigger? Are they, are they smaller? Are they bigger? Do they, do they scurry? How many legs did they have? I did it. Are they alive? It sounded like they had eight. It was a eight. But like that's like a spider. It's a spider. Is it, no, is it a big spider? Is it a small spider? What kind of spider is it? Space, I have never called? been. Hey guys, what is a space what's a, spider? Oh, it's a worm. It's an earthworm. A worm? But like it's a, a bear. <laughs> you stand in the wreckage of Heartbreaker Station with the feeling you are not alone and everything is sprawled out in front of you. Uh, you can kind of make out the mine entrance. Okay. Uh, you also would know that it's statistically probable that if Amina didn't get back up, she's somewhere in here. All right. Let's just keep going forward. Forward? We're not going to go backwards. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> All right. We have to keep going forward. Yeah. Look at me. Yeah. You're strong. No. Uh, <laughs> smart. Yeah. No, I am. Stupendous. Yeah, beautiful. 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 Uh, no, no, no. Beautiful. Yeah, no, no, no. Beautiful. Dr. Khan might be here. Dr. Khan. Dr. Khan. Khan. <laughs> Eddie, uh, Bruce. Bruce. Hey, get out with Kraken. All right, so Elmo's still alive. Yeah. Uh, Love that. Hey, Jackson, he's fine. He's not fine. He's not fine. Elmo's dead. He's not. <laughs> Sorry, I, miss I thought you said he's alive. But yeah. Oh, quit crying. It's only going to make your leg worse. Go, man. Okay. We're in the mine shaft. Yeah. Elmo's very dead. No, he's. Oh, okay. Hold on. One second. It's just the crackly fist. Okay, he's alive again. Just sit down. You're going to hurt something else that way. All right. We're trying to find a way to the sub level where Elmo might be, but are there. 
What is in this mine, man? There's like stuff squirming around oh, here. Oh, you found the buggers. Yeah. Oh, so rock nuts. Don't worry about it. It's this rock whole thing. Nuts? Okay. Before Blast X Wilson owned the mines, there was a sort of a situation where Chip Bulba, you know, the pharmaceutical giant. Sure. Yeah. So this was their prospect. They'd introduced. Okay. It's this whole thing. They bioengineered some bugs to soften the rocks. So they could get down to that. Turns out super successful at that. Totally inefficient at everything else. Absolutely harmless. They're basically like super friendly wasps. So yeah, yeah. I've and never, what's better I, than that? I've never Bright met colors. a friendly wasp in my life. But yeah. Okay. They can't hurt you as long as they number less than like twelve. It's totally fine. And they only come out in the dark anyway. So you know. Yeah, it's it. pitch yeah. black here. So fantastic. Right. Yeah. That's they're safe. It's the rock worms you got to look out for. They're usually a little deeper though, so I don't think you should run into any real problems rock, with them. Would, would the rock worms happen to be on substation two? Do you think? Oh don't yeah, this that. time of year you gotta look out for them. But that's Golly, yeah. Bruce, like you're like you're not helping. No, okay, but hey, Eddie, it's like it, look, you're with a scientist. She's got to know they're just as afraid of you as you the are afraid of them. Scientist is freaking out. <gasps> yeah, no, I've been listening to that, and it's kind of like and a whole thing for me. And you... <sighs> what? No, okay, You're I'm pretty sure he's alive. Man, you know that? Yeah. That's sarcasm. Oh, no, I don't pick on that. As If you can't tell, I have like a lot of trouble discerning what is appropriate mannerism-wise and receiving that from other people. I would like it if you didn't single me out for that just because I'm a little bit neurodiverse. Can we deal with that for just a second? <laughs> hey, Eddie, on top of this, I realize I'm not giving you enough positive affirmation. I think you're a champ. Thanks for being down there. Don't worry about the bugs. Nobody else is. Just give them a little squash. It'll send them running. Uh, good luck. Okay, we need to go deeper in this freaking mine or we're not gonna find Elmo, Khan, and your silly ID badge. Meanwhile, in the other location. So we need to take the elevator in order to like enter the mine, right? But it's broken. It's just, yeah, powered out. Uh, stairs? Stairs? Yeah. Great. shake my head looking down that endless staircase. We really? How long would it take us to climb the stairs? It's still pretty deep, like we're talking like 700 feet or something like that. So this one is sort of like a, it was an earlier cut, so it's not the like switchbacks. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's like a spiral situation all the way down. I feel like no matter what, we got a lot of walking ahead of us. Yeah. Let's just start. Okay. And we, we can't like repel with any, we don't have any. The elevator is like there, it's just not callable. Like it's just the open shaft with like some security gateway over it. I think our only option is stairs. stairs. Okay. Stairs, and as cinematic as stairs are, you begin your thing down, Great. we come back. To find Dr. Khan, we need to find her in this room that is broken with creatures crawling about. This is perfect, this is my dream, this is why I came to space. Do you have a plan of how we can go? As you calm down, focus up, have a moment of at least like normal human interaction with each other. Your headlamps, uh, as you turn to talk to him, sweep over uh, a pile of debris. And on the ground, you see a trail of bloody footprints. Sick. Yeah. Great. Do you think that was Dr. Khan? We gotta follow those. They do lead deeper on into the mine. Do we have to follow them? Uh, I guess it's probably- I mean, it's if our it's only not, lead. If it's not- Elmo, then it's probably... I doubt it was Elmo. Elmo's a sub -level layer two. lower. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, you go first. Sure. Great. Thank you. You walk into the entryway of the first cavernous mine shaft. This is, in general, the major hub is there's crates of, like, extra equipment. Uh, and uh, to your... Intact? Uh, yeah. There, there's just stuff around here. Because of the, the quick thinking of uh, Gracie earlier in order to calibrate the machine, there a general cave-in has been avoided down here. So the, the mines are here, they're just in the pitch black. You 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 sweep across other like fuel power generators and stuff like that down here. There's, there's stalagmites and stuff. Uh, you can see that one of these crates was busted open. Someone had found like some sort of like gauze or something because like a med kit has been ransacked. And so it, it looks Pretty good that, yeah. She's almost alive. So that's either Dr. Kong. Oh, she can't hear. She me. doesn't have comms. Right. Yeah. Um. She wear on. Could we try to turn on one of these generators? Yeah, absolutely. 
the there's not even like a test for that. The you you pull a ripcord on these things. It's a standard biofuel situation, and the as the mining lights click on, flickering under the inconsistent flow of the power. And so it creates a weird and unpleasant, but as you do, just so many rock gnats in every direction scurry away into the crevices and things. One like looks at you cat-like. They're about the size of a gerbil. They're, they're big buggers with iridescent eyes. One goes <laughs> the, the room vacates. So they're scared of light. Yeah. They don't like that at all. And the cavern opens like a mouth in front of you. Just pressing on into the dark. You would know from here that it leads into sort of like a vehicle bay, bay where there's uh, what the miners would use, whether that's carts or exo-loaders or different things dead ahead, and then it branches off down into the complexities of the mine in front of you. That's what you're seeing as uh, you go. So you can either just like start heading down or you can try your chance with vehicles or look around. It's kind of up to you. I'd like to first collect some fuel yeah. from whatever is laying around and just... Pick, just generate just take, yeah, just, just take some. Pods. Yeah, just as much. Uh, do you think you're going to try and like carry them with you, or just want to like set them up for your exit on the way back? I want to take a couple of fuel suits. Yeah, the, the, and we're just talking like like yeah. gas canisters. Yeah. yeah. So I'd like to give you a couple to hold, um, and then leave one beside the generator there. When the rock gnats come, are you going to stomp on them, or do you want me to be holding these two gas canisters? Okay, carry one gas canister. You can still stomp with your and slap with the other hand. And we can leave one by the... So then at least we can get through... Fine, oh, fine, 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 fine. Thank you. Um, We look around to see what other equipment is there. Yeah. The Is there something in particular you're looking for? There's all sorts of mining stuff down here. Just like anything that could be used potentially as a weapon? Oh, yeah. I mean, like pick, pickaxes, drills, power tools, jackhammers. Is there a, a bigger light? Can I get a bigger light? Yeah. yeah. Because... Now it's like a stationary work light situation. Okay, They're so I'll take, like, take my hand away, so I would lose it. It would be like carrying a work light situation, and you'd have to like carry the thing. Yeah. So, because you, you would normally just hook that into the Ginny yeah. in order to get it going. No, you can fire more of them up if you want to connect it. A generator like this, it'll it'll run for a while. Down okay, here. let's let's turn on as many as we can. Okay. So we at least know that this is a, a, a safe area to come back. Come yeah. back to. Is there something that we can use to like fight off these rock gnats if they come? Pickaxe, yeah. I'd like to have a weapon as well. What can you hold? Because I'm not going to carry it for you. Um, do the hammer. Done. Yeah. Hammer. Oh, yeah, there's like sledgehammers. Yeah. Stuff, right? Do you want like a big boy or do you want more like a ball like situation? Hammer. Yeah, yeah okay, like so <laughs> you sling a pickaxe, <laughs> one of these like futuristic alloy looking yeah. things. And you know. No, the big one doesn't go with my my outfit. I know that I'm wearing this ugly the thing, but I don't have to make it worse. The big one doesn't go with your outfit? It doesn't, I don't want to make it worse. I'm already in a bad outfit. As you're setting up these lights and situations, you notice that the light that's coming from yours is not matching the unusual iridescent glow that seems to be coming from further on down the mines. Um, and that catches your attention. Meanwhile, in the stairwell, <laughs> you've been walking for like 20 minutes. It is... Please don't harm. Sorry. You <laughs> that was it. turn and turn and turn. You can feel the deepening of this shaft as you just take these endless spiral staircases down. And you come across a great deal of rubble across the stairs. And you notice that a portion of the concrete poured wall of this thing has been bored away in a neat like hole uh, about yay big. Just, I don't know why I'm doing this, but it's <laughs> about the <laughs> ballerina. About, about ballerina size. Yes, but it's there and it goes through one side of the stairwell and then out the other. There's more like rubble and detritus going down the stairway as you descend. Looks fresh. Looks fresh and it it doesn't look like it was, do, can we tell if it's man, man-made? man There is a viscous mucus. Ho! Oh, as you've been down to expect it all through the thing. Ho, oh, fear safe situation you think? Uh, can I roll with advantage because I have Jerry? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he is your emotional support chameleon, right? right. Yeah. yeah, he is. It's what he's designed for. That's, that's Would why this I, bother you? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's scary down here. Just take some stress. Okay. 
It's, yeah, that's not great. Yeah, I- Hey, I don't think, how can we continue? There's a thing down here. It was just here. I mean, you, you know I what I want to do, but- uh, Go back up and leave. We can't be, um, do, do we see any other like pathway, any catwalk? You could probably fit inside that hole. Inside the hole? Yeah. And I can't This is a tight spiral staircase tube that you're walking down, just all the way down. So it's just been an infinite right turn since you got in this thing. Is it, could we keep just going down the stairs? Like, is it like staircase, the thing's just going across? Something like has across? ignored the pathway or whatever's here as yeah. it's burrowed through one end and out the other. It very clearly looks like uh, just something biological has gone through here. So the stairway going deeper is clear? For the moment. I mean, I'm not crawling in the hole. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't want to crawl in the hole. It's just dark. I've never, I've seen lots of the, the bugs. I've never seen anything. I mean, it looks really big. There's just darkness in the hole. If I look in the hole. There's a, well, that's not true. Like if you, you're peering down to look in the hole, in it you see just like tracks of like faint, iridescent, like just slime. The mucus sort of catches the light in a way. So I'll shoot at it. And if anything is in there, they're either going to be dead or afraid. Wait, don't you have a grenade? I have, I have a grenade. We're in... I don't... <laughs> <laughs> it's an unstable environment. I don't know I'm if a not, grenade is a good idea. Not, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I'm just going to put this away. I put it in like a Ziploc bag. <laughs> and I put it away. Um, our, should... Kelly, Chris, what, what's your combat? Uh, 43. Pretty good. Plus, mil plus military training. Okay, 34 plus nothing. Um, it will cost you nothing to just shoot around into an empty hole. Yeah, I yeah. want to just shoot shoot around in an empty hole. Should I take a gun? Okay, yeah, go ahead, shoot into the thing. You're just going to point your shotgun into the hole and pull the trigger? Yeah. Blam! And so you fire this combat shotgun, and if there was more ammo, it, it would echo, but you just feel the tremor of the thing going off as the powder sort of clears, nothing happens. I feel good about that. As you say that, <laughs> the like whole that. staircase starts to rumble a little bit as oh above God. you, pieces of the staircase start to chip, chip. And then in front of you, the, the wall starting to crackle and unveil itself. Something is pushing for, through the concrete directly at you this moment. Meanwhile, in Fuck. the- Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> Moving past the the base camp set, lots of light, extra gas, which is a plus for sure. Great job looking for that. And armed pretty decently and uh, decoratively, yeah. you walk into the vehicle bay, uh, branching off of which are lots of different tunnels and, and subsets and things. And there is a huge fracture where there should not be one. There's a, a sign that says like substation two leaning down that way, but just under the like clear markings of things, there's just a fissure and this iridescent, that's the word of the day, this this rosy, gauzy hue is just sort of emanating from inside uh, the this fissure in the ground. On the tour earlier today, you took a walk from the entrance, got in a golf cart, and then took it down the mine. There was not a giant crack right here, radiating light. Um, you do see uh, more tracks in the dust, even leading up to this. Um, the tracks in the dust lead to to this fissure yeah and where do they do we see any more tracks outside of on the other side of the fissure tell me what you're thinking like so right now you're like standing looking at it is this something you're like let's go investigate i mean i think we should keep following we have to follow the tracks as you walk down the tunnel your your flashlight tilts up and and reveals very clear now down here in the the thick dirt and dust that's been shaken loose clear boot prints and those boot prints lead to a set of boots it is alive. Standing straight, her arm at a horrifying angle as she gazes down into this. Is she gonna jump? No, she's just looking in. Uh, you can see a heavy wound that she's taped and sort of plasti dipped on the side of sealing up her up her suit. As, as your light tilts up, you can see the damage is pretty extensive to the right side of, of her body. And again, she's just sort of done what she needs to um, with her good arm. It's just, she's she's done the triage that's necessary, but standing still in the dark saying nothing is this woman looking into the crevasse. It's very definitely her from her just signature suit that she had earlier. I will tap her on the shoulder. Yeah. 
She starts and looks at you. She turns. She is messed up. Her face is just crushed on one side of the of, of the interior of her helmet. I think it's a, a fear safe situation for both of you here. Two. Ah. Wow. She looks at what? <laughs> two critical failures as she locks eyes first with you locks eye the ones two <gasps> smashed and it's thing just you came back for me you must see this what are you Dr. saying Cole, what, happened? what happened to your she reaches out with her good arm and says it's so precious and then looks back down into the crevasse and says exquisite meanwhile inside the spiral staircase well, let's remember those yeah. critical fails <laughs> The concrete starts to shift and fall. You have seconds before you either meet what is coming through the wall in front of you. What do you want to do? Run. Run. Down. Down, Down. yes. Let's go. Okay. You start to haul, and that is where we will end this exciting episode of The Panic Table. Tune in next week for the next exciting installment of Unaccompanied Minors, where things are about to get worse. All right. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and... um, Three episodes and we're not dead. Three episodes. Oh, hey, your high score goes up by one. Good job, everybody. Yeah. Space. <laughs> Three. Space. 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 Ah! Ah! See you next time.